ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿದೆಯಲ್ಲ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಯೂನಿಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ಸಿಲೆಬಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಎಡಿ ಇಡಿ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಹೋಪಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟೂಡ್ ಕಾಂಬಿನೇಷನಲ್ ಸರ್ಕ್ಯೂಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಆಡರ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪ್ಲೆಕ್ಸ್ ಡಿ ಕೋಡರ್ಸ್ ಎನ್ ಕೋಡರ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟೂಡ್ ಸೀಕ್ವೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಸರ್ಕ್ಯೂಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಲ್ಯಾಚರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ಲಿಪ್ ಲಾಪ್ಸ್ ಕೌಂಟರ್ಸ್ ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿಂಗ್ ನಾವ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಟೈಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಬಿಲ್ಡ್ ಎ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ ಯೂನಿಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಎ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸರ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದೀಸ್ ಸರ್ಕ್ಯೂಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಬಿಲ್ಡ್ ಎ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸರ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಆನ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಿತ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಕಾಂಬಿನೇಷನ್ ಸೆಕ್ವೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಸರ್ಕ್ಯೂಟ್ಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಹೌ ದ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸರ್ ವರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಟು ರೈಟ್ ಅನ್ ಎಲ್ ಪಿ ಕೋಟ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ವಿತ್ ದ ಫಂಡಮೆಂಟಲ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ರೈಟ್ ಎನಿ ಹೈ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಕ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಸರ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ ಸೇ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ so hope you can see on the screen what i am writing it so let's take an any high level language program hll program let's say i want to add two numbers some statement i'll write like that let's say c is equal to a plus b any other language the moment we write a program we have an hardware with us that is a computing element the hardware can be one of the four types generally it can be a processor like a microprocessor so that mean that the whole processor is built on a single chip that's called as a microprocessor but it does not have the memory and the peripherals built into the chip when you want to build small applications a small systems people use microcontroller here on a single chip you have a microprocessor plus memory plus peripherals all available in a single chip people use this also as a computing element sometimes lot of signal processing is required so we have to process the audio process the video signal people use what is called digital signal process which is nothing but processor plus controller plus also have a capability to perform the fourier transforms other computations it can able to perform easily sometimes all three are not used they use a specific ics built for a particular purpose application specific ics or you can say fpgas so that mean that the whole processing plus important algorithms which are required for a particular application are built at the hardware levels so using a vhdl hardware inception language so we convert high level language into dark hdl and they prepare the hardware based on that instructions so this may be the your computing element but the computing element can understand only one language it is only ones and zeros it can understand so that mean that so the language which it the machine can understand which is called as the binary language or sometimes since it's a machine we use a word called as the machine language so now you have a language where you use a text alphabetics numbers everything you use it but ultimately the program has to be put on a hardware where it has to be in the machine language so we use a lot of tools to bring from high level language to the language what machine can understand so first we have to use what is called as compiler we will be using a software so which converts high level language into what is called as the assembly language alp so so in assembly language the instructions will be looked like this say move c a plus b is there now it can like like it can be uh, instruction can be like this say load a get into uh, <clears throat> a the memory location into some register r0 so load so from b you bring it to another register r1 then you perform addition of a plus 
B and the answer can be stored in A plus B in the sense I'll replace A with the R0. So B with the R1, I'll keep the answer, let's say R2. Then I'll store the answer what is present in R2 to the C. So that means that assembly language programs will be like this. So where you have, we use some registers and memory location in the instruction, we'll learn this one. You know? In the next few moments, we'll learn this one. So the compiler converts your HLL program or high level program into what is called as assembly language code. So this is LP code. Now, again, this is in the text format. The mission requires mission language. So what we do is we will again use another tool called as assembler. So the assembler will convert the LP code into what is called as mission language code, or we sometimes use a word called object object program or object code. So this object code or a machine language program, so they are nothing but ones and zeros. They can be directly put on the hardware. You can execute the program. <clears throat> so to understand, to design the processor itself, you want to design the processor itself. So before designing the processor, we should know that how assembler works, how to write a program in assembly language. So how to store the data in the memory, all those things, concepts will be required essential before we build our own processor. So in the next few uh, minutes or uh, maybe in the next one hour, we will discuss about what are the basics of assembly language program. So now I'll go back to the slide. Okay, so any system, any system basically comprises like this. So this is called as what is present inside the processor and the processor is connected to the memory. So all over uh, the data, so the and the program will be stored always in the main memory as and when required you bring the program into the processor execute the program store the result back to the memory this is a process is involved now what are the important things a process should have a process will have what is called as alu any alu what is available in today's market as capable of doing arithmetic operation like addition subtraction multiplication division like those operations Logic operation like and or XR not these are the operations any ALU can able to perform. So this ALU gets the instruction based on the instruction. It will perform the operation as specified by the instruction. This is one unit. Next, once you get the instructions into the processor, as we have seen in the previous example, you should require the register to keep the temporary values or to keep the answer or in, in between values, whatever the values we generate, intermediate values to require the registers. So more the register, it is better for the processor. So almost all the processors will provide set of registers. Let's say if there are n registers are there, we are naming the register by R0 to Rn minus one. All the registers present inside the processor will have a unique name. Let's R0, R1, R2. When we say memory, we don't have a unique name for every location. We say address, but whereas registers, will have a unique name. Why register should have a unique name? Because you have to refer that registers in the instructions. Say move R0, R1, I have to refer it. I'll refer by name. That's why every register will be have a unique name. How does the register are built? Registers are nothing but sequential circuits. Every one register is nothing but the register what you studied in the theory. Only thing is they will not have a shift capability, but they can have a storing capability. If the register is 8-bit, that means that eight flip-flops are used to build this one register. If, uh, if a register is a 32 bit, that means that 32 bit flip flops, 32 flip flops are used to build one register. That's how registers are built using sequential circuits. Now, there are certain registers are there which are special meaning is there. That means that these registers, whatever they be indicated, or we call them a general purpose register, are visible to the programmer. When I say visible to the programmer, you can use their names in the assembly language instruction add or zero i can refer it but there are certain instructions there are certain registers which are not visible to the programmer i cannot use the word move ir move pc we will not use it generally because why they are hidden inside the process but they have a specific meaning is there what is the specific meaning the first register program counter program counter register is the one which contains the address of the next instruction to be executed to start with program counter will be loaded with a zero zero so that program starts from executing the first instruction so as you ex start executing the instruction one by one program counter will always increment by so by four 
if four bytes are required for one instruction let's see that later now what is the meaning of instruction register instruction register is the one which holds the instruction as soon as the instruction comes from the memory to the processor so the moment you finish one instruction the next instruction is brought from the memory and kept in the instruction register so whatever the value you have in the instruction register will give an information that what to perform what is the meaning of the instruction what it has to do it so who will read this data it is read by the control circuit so control circuit is the one here which is connected to the instruction register which reads the content of instruction register and performs what operation it's supposed to perform is it an addition is it a subtraction where is the data is available all the meanings are hidden in the instruction which is information given to control circuit control circuit generates different signals to all of this the blocks present inside the processor control circuit is also generate signals what is required for the memory also apart from these register the most of the process nowadays like arm processor will provide one more register called as link register lr so link register is a one which is used whenever we call the subroutine whenever we call a subroutine after execution of subroutine we have to come back to the place where the call is initiated so that means that the return address is required to be saved somewhere so nowadays in the latest architecture the return address will be saved in the link register in earlier processor return address was saved in the stack but stack is also what memory which is outside the processor you require more time to access the stack so link register is what present inside the processor so that if i store the return address inside the link register it will be execution calling is a routine returning will be faster so summarizing so a processor will have an alu to perform arithmetic logical operation it has got a general purpose register used for the programmer to implement his logics it has got the non visible register like program counter which sequences the execution of the program instruction register which holds the instruction and contains the meaning which is fed to the control unit to generate the required signals inside the processor and outside the processor to get the instruction executed am i audible mohan somebody am i audible yes sir audible yeah audible okay. audible sir okay yes sir so now we will go to the next one so now whenever we build any processor we want to purchase a processor the question immediately everyone ask is how much time the processor takes to execute the program given in high level language so if i give a processor if i give an high level language program like a c or python if i ask the question how much of time does the processor takes to execute the program given in a high level language this can be computed by using the formula it's called as basic performance equation so the formula is n into s divided by r any high level language program you will be given first you have to convert into machine level language so whenever you convert into machine level language we we say that this high level language program requires 40 machine level language instructions so n is indicates number of machine language instructions any program given in high level language first convert into machine level language using compiler and assembler i get some machine level language instruction how does the machine language instruction look add subtract move like that so first is a n i should know that the program whatever is written in any language convert into machine language count how many instructions are there next yes what do you mean by yes every machine level language instruction requires some clock cycles to finish the operation we have seen that in both all the sequential circuits clock is important if i say four clock cycles that mean that one clock cycle time into four times is the total time required to complete the execution so every instruction requires some clock cycles for example some instruction like add move will take less number of clock cycles some instruction like a division multiplication will take a more number of clock cycles so what we have to do is we have to list out all the instruction provided for a particular processor note down what is the total number of clock cycles required for every instruction then add them and divide by the number of instructions so i will get what is called average number of basic steps or clock cycles needed to execute one machine instruction when i say basic step that the amount of work i can complete in one clock cycle that's called as a basic step so yes means average number of clock cycles required for any instruction for a given processor some instruction may have a four some instruction have a 10 but we will average it out let's average six like that we have to find out next or r is that 
what is the speed at which you are supplying the clock? That's called as a clock rate. So we, we measured the megahertz, gigahertz like that. So if one, if, they, if I say that CPU is running at one kilohertz, that means that thousand clock cycles it can execute in one second. So that is a rate. So that is a denominator. So what is the formula? First, given any program, convert it to machine language instruction, count how many instructions you have it, then find out an average of how many clock cycles are required per instruction, then divide it by the clock rate. So that gives you the total time required to execute a program. So now we'll solve two, three uh, programs, uh, two, three problems of the last time semester exam based on this formula and then continue our knowledge. So let's move to the, I have just documented some questions on the bottom. We will finish and come back. Okay. So now look at these questions. So let's solve these questions based on the knowledge, whatever we got from the formula. A program contains 100 instructions. Out of that, 50% of instructions requires four clock cycles and remaining requires three clock cycles per execution. Find the total time required to execute the program running at one megahertz machine. All parameters are there. Now let's start. 50% of 100 instructions means 50 instructions. So how much do they take? Four clock cycles. So it's nothing but 200 clocks are required to execute 50 instructions. Now another 50% instructions, they take only three clock cycles. I said, based on the instruction, clock cycles are always vary. So it's a three clock, so 150. So totally 350 clock cycles are required. So to complete execution of the 100 instruction. Now, what is the time for one clock? This is nothing but one by, so the frequency. So T is equal to one by frequency. That is one megahertz, so one microsecond. M means, uh, if you take it to the numerator, it becomes a micro, one microsecond. Now total time is what? 350 clocks into one microsecond, so 350 microsecond. That means that answer is to execute 100 instructions of a particular uh, type, total time required is 350 microsecond. Let's go to the next program. A program contains 1000 instructions. Out of that, 25% of instructions requires four clock cycles, 40% instructions require five clock cycles, and remaining requires three clock cycles for execution. Find the total time required to execute the program running at one gigahertz machine. 25% means 250 into four clock cycle, 1000. So 40% of the instruction means 400 instructions, five clocks, 2000. 35% means 350 into three clocks, 1050. Now total number of clocks required to execute all the 1000 instructions, what? Addition of these things, 4050 clocks. Now what is the speed at which it runs? So one by one gigahertz. So that's the T. So nothing but 4050. So 10 to the power of nine. So bring it to the, so numerator means it's a, so you can just find out what is the value. Huh? So it's a 4.06 microseconds we get it. So like this, given any program with the help of this formula, you can find out total time required to complete the execution of the, the program. So now let's continue from the, from there. Now, so now we have understood that there's a formula is there from that you can always find out what the total time required. This is not completely true in the sense it is not possible to represent truly actual time required based on the program based on only these parameters. If I give you two computers and give this formula and give the value of NST, you cannot take a decision. This computer is better than the other computer because why? A computer performance not only depends upon NST, it also depends upon the cache memory. It depends upon the multiprocessor. It depends upon the multi-core. So it depends upon how many processors have been in integrated. So how it's been implemented. A lot of parameters comes into picture when you want to take a decision whether this processor or computer is better than the another computer. So that's why the industry has, so they use what is called spec rating. Spec means what? In the system performance evaluation corporation. This is a NGO. They give what is called spec rating for every computer. So if I have a computer with me, new computer with me, how do I calculate the spec rating for a new computer? First, the spec will release what is called, and based on the year, they have released certain standards. Spec 2000 is one standard, spec 2000. In the spec 2000 standard, so they've used a reference computer called as Ultra Spark. 10 workstation with ultra spark 3 processor that means that they will take one standard application 
for a particular domain like a game playing one application database related one application run on the reference computer called ultra spark 3 processor based computer now the same program you have to run on the new computer whose performance you're supposed to test it so once you run both of them so then you calculate what is called running time of the reference computer like a spark machine divided by running time on the computer under test so if i say spec rating is 50 that means that my computer or new computer works 50 times faster than the the reference computer so this is the reference people use today for a what is called finding the performance of a computer you may ask the question sir can i rely on only one type of program no that's why they have they have designated many number of applications benchmark programs for every domain so what you have to do for every program benchmark program you have to find out what is the uh, uh, what is the reference spec rating for every type of program then take the geometric mean of all the timings then you call it a spec rating so spec rating is nothing but uh, giving a performance based on the reference computer and based on the benchmark programs that's called spec rating now so having understood the performance of a computer now we'll go to the little more details about the the processor and the memory interface now so there are certain concepts are there we have to understand whenever we want to use the memory with the processor let's say i have to convert i have to connect a memory to a, a processor then what are the concepts required so let's observe this for a moment now so what concepts are required So let's understand the, the concept now. So whenever <clears throat> we connect the memory, so we have to follow the following things. Number one, I will take the processor now. I will take the memory. Now the processor is connected to the memory by what is called as number of pins provided on the processor. Number of pins are there. Collectively, all the pins, I will indicate it by a bus. I will write like this. It's a bus. When I say bus, set of pins are there. So all the set of pins which carries what is called address of a memory is called as address bus. So the basic number of <clears throat> buses required for any processor is what? Address bus is a primary one, which is the one which generates an address to the memory location. So from where you can get the instruction into the processor. There is another set of lines are there on the processor. So again, which is a set of lines. So which requires, so which requires to bring the data from the address location. If I say address bus generates an address called 100, that means that a location in the memory called 100 is referred. So inside that, let's say I have a data called 55 is there. This 55 will be placed in the data bus. So what we have to understand is the address bus is used to carry the address to the memory location. Data bus is used to carry the data from memory to the processor or from processor to the memory itself. Now, two concepts you have to, you have to understand here. Can I use whatever the amount of memory I require to a processor? That means that See, I have the money. Can I purchase any size of memory and connect to the processor? It's possible. No, it is limited by size of address bus. Size of address bus. If address bus is four bits, let's say four bits, that means that what is the possible addresses? The first is zero zero combination. You can continue like that. One one. That means that 16 combinations are possible. That is nothing but two to the power of four. So how many addresses are possible? Only 16 addresses are possible. Memory locations, you can able to access them when you have four bits. If you continue like that, eight bits. So I have two to the power of eight, 256. Like this, you can always find out what is the address capability. Nowadays, most of the most of the processor will provide 32 bit address bus. So that means that it's around four GB, four gigabytes. So like that, I can find out based on the size of the address bus, what is the total memory I can able to connect to the processor. So if 32 bit is an address bus, it is not possible even to add one extra location to the memory 
to the processor. Only 4 GB is possible. You may ask the question, said I have a lot of applications are there, I have a lot of data there, then where do we keep it? You keep in the hard disk. You always you can keep in the hard disk drive, secondary store devices. So when it required, you bring them into here and then use it. So that's what we call secondary storage. So this memory is also called as main memory. Main memory means the memory which is directly connected to the processor through the address bus. Anything which is connected directly to the address bus is called as what? Main memory. So I can use them using a paging concept. I can replace the pages. I can bring it to the main memory. I can use it. But uh, if you want to keep always in a main memory program means the limitation is what? This is the address bus is the limitation. Now, so now we'll go to the next concept. How much of data I can bring from the memory to the processor at time? That depends upon the size of data bus, size of data bus. If the size of the data bus is, let's say 32 bits, that means that what? I can bring 32 bits of information from the memory to the, the processor I can able to bring it. So the based on the size of the data bus, people also use a, a one name called word length. If somebody asks, what is the word length of this processor? We generally look at the, what is called as the data bus or we look at the ALU capability or we look at the register capability. If the register is 32 bits, then also called word length is 32 bit. If the ALU can handle two numbers of 32 bit, then also we call it the word length is 32 bit. Generally, the register size, the ALU capability and the data bus always will be same. There will be no difference will be there. All 32 means everything, all this that when I say the processor is word length is 32 bit means the register size is also 32 bit. The ALU capability, computation capability, adding two numbers at a time is also 32 bits. And the, the data bus size also will be 32 bit. It's all will be same. Now, so now there is a concept called as byte addressability is used in the industry. So what do you mean by byte addressability? So when I say that I have two to the power of 32, four giga locations are there, four giga locations are there. I'm using the word called byte I'm using for every this. That means that even though word length is 32 bit, but each location address refers to only one byte. So you have to understand this basic concept one, it's very important. That means that let's say the address is generated by 00. zero. That means that it can refer to only one byte, eight bit it can refer it. So if I generate an address one, it refers to what? Another byte. If I write another one, one zero, another one, let's say one one, it's a four. So it's also one byte. But what is the size of the word length? Size of the word length is 32 bit. Even though you can read 32 bit at a time, but not all the, all the four memory locations can give the data at a time. Because why? One address you generate, I can generate zero zero, or I can generate zero one, or I can generate one zero or one, any one I can generate it. So any one means I can access only one byte, but your data bus is capable of what? 32 bit. So that is why memories are organized in a banking concept. They will, they will placed in a bank wise at a time, four addresses can contribute one byte and they prepare what is called as 32 bit number. So this is how memories are organized inside. So now onwards, if you look at here, if you look at here, if I say the word length is 32 bit here, so that means that inside this memory, they would have used 8-bit memories to build what is called like a bank. And whenever you refer to one address, if I say address 00, zero that means that it refers to what? Four memory locations at a time, 0, 1, 2, 3. All four will contribute 8 bits and become 32-bit data will come here and you're going to read it. So let's not go into the design details of that banking. So understand that one address refers to always one byte. So if I want to read a four byte, one word means four memory locations are required at a time. That means that at a time, four memory locations in a single chip cannot be read. That is why we use four banks of memory, four different chips. Each chip contributes what? One byte. Together, I'll read 32 bits. So this is a concept you have to understand. So let's go back to the, the presentation. So, so that's what, see it's n bits. So first word, second word, eighth word, I given the memory words are given. So, so you can just see that 32 bits means it will be written like B0, B1, B31. So the last bit will be the sign bit. So for sign numbers, if you are storing uh, normal ASCII codes like characters or strings like that, generally I can stuff four characters into this one. Hmm. So now let's go to the 
next concept so whenever i want to store a 32 bit number let's say in this example i am taking 44 33 22 11 is a it's a 32 bit number h means hexadecimal that means that every one digit in this eight digit numbers represent one nibble which will be converted into what is called as binary if you look at for example here so four four means what zero one zero zero again four zero one zero zero three means zero zero one one like that every one digit will require four bits to represent one nibble so total it becomes what eight digits into four 32 bit number 32 bit number will always be represented like this h means hexadecimal every digit can take a value from zero to f in a in a hexadecimal format now i have a 32 bit number is there but i told you that the memory is organized as what one address one memory location now my requirement is what i have a 32 bit number but i want to store it in a memory which is a byte organized so how do we store them so we will just write and understand so, and then i show that the figure Now, so what is the question? Store or write, store or write 32 bit number, 32 bit number. So 44, 33, 22, 11, one, H. Or sometimes we also give an exam like this 0x, 44, 33, 22, 11. So 0x means it's also hexadecimal, H means also hexadecimal. Now the memory, what I have is like this each one byte will have a different address now i require four bytes to store 32 bit number because one memory location one address means i can store only what one byte another one byte one more address one more byte is required for one more address one more byte is required well, one more address is required for one byte so let's say that the memory is starting from zero i have a one i have a two or three i'm taking in this case same memory if the memory is bank means the 0, 1, 2, 3 would have been distributed uh, among the four memory chips. So now we are assuming that a single chip is there. All the memory locations are one after the other, it will be there. So now if I want to store this 32 bit number into this memory, two questions comes. Shall I start storing 11 into the 0 or shall I start storing 44 into the 0? This question comes into picture. Now. There are two schemes are available, what is called as little endian format, one format of storing, other is called as big endian format. So these are the two formats used by the processor manufacturers in the industry. Little endian is followed by the Intel processors, the Motorola and ARM supports, so big endian format. ARM supports both, you can choose in, by configuring which format, but Motorola supports big endian Intel supports little India. Now I take four locations here also. Here also four locations are there. Now this is 0, 1, 2, 3. In the little Indian format, look at the lower significant byte first. Which is the lower significant byte? Among this, this is the lower significant byte. Look at the lower address. Which is the lower address? 0 is the lower address. Copy this to here. 11 will be stored here. Next lower significant, 22. Next, next lower significant address. That is 22. I have to store here. 33 and then 44. This is how it will be stored in the, the memory in case of Intel processors. If it's a modular processors, so number will be stored like that. So first, the lower significant value will be stored in the higher address. Correct now, that is higher significant value will be stored in the lower address. That is 44 will be stored here, then 33, then 22, and then the 11. So this format is of storing is called as Little Indian or Big Indian. This concept is used in the industry for doing that. So this is the same thing has been indicated here in the, this picture. Okay. So now we'll go to the types of instructions, what is supported by the, the processor. I'm adding Mohan or someone else can see me. I'm yes, sir, yes, yes. Yes, yeah. articles. So now we will go to the uh, type of instructions what is supported by the, the processor. So there are three types of instructions are available. They are called as zero address instructions, one address instruction, 
two address instruction, three address instruction. Zero address instructions are very rarely used. It's not required. Let's not refer that. Now let's go to the one address instruction. What is the format? Operation destination. If you look at the instruction at A, that means that there's only one operand is being specified in the instruction at. Now, so let us let's go to the two address instruction. How does the format? Operation, source, and destination. That means that at A B, two operands are specified here. Three address instruction, operation, source one, source two, destination, add A, B, C. Let's understand from a three address now. When I say add A, B, C, the instruction contains two source operands that which gives the data and also it specifies where is the answer to be stored, destination. So add the contents of memory location A to the contents of B, total answer whatever you get, store in the memory location called C. Here, all three are explicitly specified in the instruction. What is an advantage? You can have a different register names for all the ABC. That means that different memory location for all ABC. So you can have a unique. Now let's move to the two address instruction. Here, only two operands are specified. One is a source, other act like what? Source come destination. That means the destination will also, will also act like what? Source and destination. So what will happen when you say add AB? Add the contents of AB and answer to be stored somewhere, but the, it's not indicated here. So the B itself act as what? Destination. So A plus B answer is stored back into the, the B. Now look at the single instruction. Here only one operand is indicated here. They say destination. You may ask the question, sir, where is the then source? What I supposed to add it? Always in case of a single address instruction, there's a concept called accumulator will be there. Accumulator is a special register present in particularly Intel process. The name of the register is called AL, AX, like that will be there. So this register will always be used to hold one of the operand whenever you're performing arithmetic or logical operation. When I say add A, what does it mean that? I'm adding the contents of an accumulator by default we don't we don't know explicitly specify by default it is taken and then contents of a will be added whatever the answer you get that will be answer stored back into the ax register so when you say add a contents of accumulator plus the contents of a memory location register and whatever the answer you get stored back into the accumulator so so in case of single address instruction accumulator holds one of the operand and also accumulate to hold the result of the program. Now, based on this one, now we will solve one exam question. So now we will solve one question now. So so now we will write a program to perform the following job. So let's write a program to perform the following job. So what is the program? So x to the power of 4 plus 2x plus 6. So y. So now I have to write an ALP code to implement this statement. So now I will write the program. The question was given like that. Write the program using three address, two address and one address instruction. Now we will write the program, ALP program first using the three address. Then we will write using a two address. Then we'll write a one address instruction. Let's go with the, the first one. So now we will assume that the processor what we are using to write in the ALP supports add instruction, support subtraction instruction, support multiplication, support move instruction. All arithmetic and movement data transfer instructions are supported. Now let's write. So first instruction mul m u l t. So I want to uh, first perform the 2x. I will perform the 2x first. So I will multiply 2, comma, and then whatever the value is there in the x, I take it. Then after multiplying, I'll store the answer in the y. So what will happen after this instruction? It will be like this 2 into x, and the answer is stored where? In the y. This is the meaning of this instruction. Now, whenever I use a symbol called hash, that means that it is a number. It is not the name of the memory location or it is not the name of the register. It's a number which is indicated as a part of the instruction. Now we'll go to the next instruction. MU LT mult X into X into X. The value of X is not still changed. Whatever 2X I've done, 
I have stored back in the Y register or the Y memory location. X contents are not disturbed. So X is as it is, it is there. X into X, X means is nothing but AX multiplied by AX. It becomes, you get an X square. So that is stored back in the what? X only. Now X value is replaced by what? X square. Now again, I multiply one more time. Mult. So X into X and put it back into the X. So what will happen? X square, which was already there. And again, X square, multiply the same thing. It becomes X to the power of four. I'm storing that answer into the X. Now, what does X contain? X to the power of four is there already. Now, already Y contains two X. Now, X contains X to the power of four. I will add both of them. So add, so X and Y and store the answer in a Y. So what does the Y contain now? X to the power of four plus two into X. And the answer is stored in a Y. Now, so now I have to add what is called six to this one. So I'll go to the add. So hash six because it's a number immediately. Adding to the the Y because Y contains the the partial answer till this point and store back answer in the the Y. So now ultimately after doing all these instructions, so the whole expression whatever you are evaluated and kept the answer in the Y location. This is how. Using the three address instructions, we have done three address instructions. We have done it. Now let's do the same program using a two address instructions. So let's build that program now. So this is the second type of program. Now, so here one of the memory, one of the operand will act as what source and destination also. So that you have to remember it. So move. I'll take the value of first AX. Keep a copy in the Y. So what will happen here? The contents AX is moved to the y and a copy of the x is there in the y because i'm going to disturb the value of x that's why i'll keep a copy in the the y now so i'll write the first multiplication mult x x so what will happen here the x is multiplied by x itself and the answer that is x square is stored in the x so now again so i'll use one more mult again x into x i'll give it so this becomes what x square which was already there in the x now again x square now answer is stored that is x4 will be stored in the x in all these cases so the second one second one will act as what source also will act as a destination also now i perform x to the power of 4 now i'll perform 2x which is already x is there in the y we have kept it there we have kept it here now i'll multiply 2 to the y now what will happen y which is nothing but contained already x so 2 is multiplied with an x answer stored in the y so this is there in the now in the y register now so now after this i will add contents of x and y store the answer back in the the y itself now so now add 6 to the y so now what will happen the y contains the total expression so whatever we supposed to execute it, that is the same thing has been performed here. So this is called as two address instruction. So two address instructions are used here. Now let's go to third one. So third one. So third one. So here accumulator is used to supply the one of the source operand. Accumulator is also used to store the answer. So now first no number will be there in the accumulator. Accumulator is empty. So that's why I'll move the X into the accumulator first. Move X means, so what will happen? X will move to the accumulator. Now, I multiply one time the X on itself. That means when I say multiply X, accumulator is multiplied with the X. What is there in the accumulator? X is already there. So you got X square. Again, I'll write one more time mult X. So what will happen? X square which is already there in the accumulator is multiplied with the X and it becomes a X to the power of Q. Again, use one more time, mult X. Now what will happen? X to the power of Q which is there in the accumulator multiplied with an X and it becomes X to the power of four. Now, now X to the power of four is done. Now I have to add two X to that one. Adding two X is nothing but what? Adding the X two times is nothing but adding two X. So I'll add X one time add x another time so this becomes what x to the power of 4 plus 
x plus x this is nothing but what 2x we have added it now add i'll 6 to that to the accumulator so now what will happen x to the power of 4 and 2x so which is there in the accumulator now so i'm adding 6 to that and the whole answer will be stored back into what accumulator so whatever the answer is there in the accumulator i have to keep it what in the memory location called y so i'll say store store whatever there in the accumulator to the location called y so this is the program using single address instructions single address instructions so this is how we write a program using the single address instructions now so now we have understood there are three types of instructions are there single address two address three address given any program using the simple arithmetic and moment data transfer instructions we can implement the the logics now if you look at this program if if i ask you the question which is easier for the programmer to write a program you can always say that three address instructions is easy for the program to develop the logics but for the hardware which is more challenging to implement three address is a challenging single address is easy to implement again it is a very thin line to take so which uh, way the industry has to move forward so they have to facilitate the programmers also they have to facilitate the hardware manufacturing uh, vendors also mm -hmm. so let's move to the the next concept now we have understood one address and the two address instructions now it's a time for us to understand what is called as the condition code flags whenever you perform any arithmetic operation in the browser add subtract multiply it will be going to set four flip-flops the each flip-flop will be called as a one flag collection of all the flip-flops together or the flags together we call as flag register generally called as a flag register also it's called as condition port flags so it's also called as some process program status word register why these flags are important because every time you finish one operation if the next instruction is if statement if type of construct i have to implement in assembly language i should know that what happened in the previous operation how do you know that what happened in the previous operation whether the previous answer is zero whether the previous has produce a greater answer that means that if the one number is greater than the other number if the previous result is nothing but one number is less than the other number or previous number is a signed number positive or negative number all these things will be reflected by these four flags which are part of a processor so processor not only contains general purpose register program counter instruction register and the link register it also contains a special register called as flag register so flag is nothing but what four to six flip flops put together each one indicate one meaning now let's look at the first flag register n n means what negative flag so whenever the answer is negative that is the last bit of the answer is one this flag will be set whenever the last bit of the number is zero this flag becomes what zero and it is a positive number zero when the an answer of any arithmetic operation is zero this flag will be set indicating that answer is zero overflow whenever you perform arithmetic operations if the answer what is produced the cannot be accommodated in the given size of the bits then we say overflow has occurred how do we measure the overflow generally we use what the carry generated from the last bit carry generated from the last but one bit if it is a 32 bit number carry from the 31st bit carry from the 30th bit both will take them perform the xr operation whatever you get that is called overflow so then carry flag carry flag is carry generated from the last bit of the number that is 32 bit 31st bit whatever the carry comes that is called as a carry carry bit or carry flag so these are the four flags which are generally present so let, now let's uh, do one program so how the carry flags on these flags will be affected when you perform any operation so let's do that one now okay now i have the instruction let's say move so move hash let's say 45 to r0 register move let's say 68 to r1 register now add r0 r1 and store that answer so the question is given like this indicate indicate the flags after the program execution after the program 
execution execution now so this is the like a last year quiz question now how do we do it first take the 45 now to make it simple i'll just say 45 h is number this is 68 h if at all if the h is not given you have to convert first of all 45 into binary pattern so or hexadecimal number and then you have to continue so when i say already we have given 45 h means it's already in the binary format it's an hexadecimal format you can directly convert each digit into a nibble 50101 0, 0, 0, 0. i can write it next take the second number 68 h it's already in the nibble format so 100 0, 0. 6 means 0, 1, 1, 0. Now, what is an operation they given? Addition is an operation. Perform the addition. If they are given a subtraction, you have to take a two's complement of a second number and then you have to add it. If they are not given subtraction, only addition, then it's a like a direct addition if you do it. So 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. And the carry comes here and then it becomes 1. And there's no carry from here. It is a 0. Now, so what is the zero flag? Answer is not zero. So it is zero. Now, when uh, the n sign flag, the last bit is one. So it should be one. That means that it's a negative number. Next, overflow flag. So what do you mean by overflow flag? I said carry from the last bit and the previous bit. Now we can just look at here. So I'm applying an XR gate. The one carry coming from the last bit is what? Zero. Carry coming from the bit next to the last bit. It's a one. So both are one. So output is one. That means that it's a overflow flag. So this is for your understanding. Overflow flag means carry from the last bit and carry from the last to the uh, last bit. So that is carry from the previous to the last bit. Take both of them and do the XR operation. Whatever you get, that is a overflow flag. So the last one is carry flag so there is no carry coming from the last bit it's zero so zero so this is how you have to find out given any program any arithmetic operation how the flags will be set in a process can be documented like this now let's continue now we have understood red flag next level now let's go to the very important topic called as addressing modes so what is the meaning of addressing modes every processor will provide set of instruction like 70, 80, 100 instruction that provide it. In every instruction, you have to specify the data that's called operands. The way you specify the operands is variety. It's a different way is there. The data that is operand can exist inside the processor in the form of register. The data that is operand for the instruction can exist outside the processor. That is, it can be a memory location or sometimes the data can be part of the instruction itself. So all three cases will be available. So let's look at the all combinations of addressing mode supported by any general purpose processor. Let's go to the first addressing mode, it's called immediate. <coughs> In immediate addressing mode, the number, whatever indicated here, so let's say 20 is moved to R0. What does it mean that? Any immediate addressing mode, if you use it, Hash symbol is there means it's an immediate addressing mode. Here what will happen? The number 20 is moved to R0. Register addressing mode. Move R1, R0. What does it mean that? Contents of R1 will be copied to R0. Always remember that move is like a copy. The contents of R1 will not be lost. When I say R1 contains 10, R0 contains 5. 10 is moved to the R0. But 10 still will be there in the R1. It's like a copy. Next. So only these two are not memory related instructions because here the data is what? Inside the processor. The first one is what? Data is a part of the instruction itself. In all the remaining instructions, addressing modes, you should remember that memory is involved. Let's go to the first one, direct address one. Move sum R2. What does it mean that? Sum is the label or the name of a one memory location. It can be anything. It can be 2000, 1000, some address. So if you are given a name, the contents of that memory location is moved into the register called R2. So here you should always remember that. So you should not get confused with the if I if I if I instead of sum, if I write 2000 here, that is also valid. What does the 2000 indicate? It's an address of memory location. 
contents of 2000 is moved to R2. You should not get confused. If I write here, if I remove the hash here, only write 20, it becomes what? Absolute addressing mode. That means that 20 is not moved to R0. Contents of 20 will move to R0. If I say hash, the number itself is moved to the R2. If I don't use a hash, if I use some name or number, it refers to an address. That address is not moved. We have to go to that memory location whose address is indicated here. That content you have to move to our required register. There is a difference between direct and immediate. Now, so let's understand indirect addressing mode. Many times only direct addressing mode is not enough to support large operations. So let's understand this addressing mode with an example, the program. So, now let's say I want to add, I want to add, I want to add I want to add, let's say, 10 numbers, 10 numbers. So then what is the way? Let's say I can write the instruction like that, add. So location one, which is contains the first number to some register R0. Then I can write add, what is the answer? Number, second number stored in location two, R0. So I keep on adding like that. So then add location 10 stored in R0. So now till the knowledge, till now the knowledge, whatever we have in the addressing mode, I can write the program only like this. If the numbers are thousand numbers are there, I have to write all thousand instructions. This is not an efficient. Now, is there any other way I can able to reduce my program and using just one or two instruction, I can able to add a set of numbers. So let's say if they provide an instruction like this at R0 is there, but here, the address what has been specified here, for example, first time when you execute this program, I suppose to get what this address should becomes, let's say location one. When I execute the same program second time, this location one should become what location two. When I execute third time, it should become what location three. That means that the address what is provided by the one of the operand in the add instruction should keep changing dynamically. If that is supported then one add instruction multiple times I can able to execute it. So this is supported like that. So we will do like this move. I have an address, let's say an address. So of location one, I'll move to the R0 register or R1 register. Now, what does it mean that? That mean that there are so many locations are in memory starting from location one to let's say location N. Location one refers to what? Some address called, let's say, thousand. So when I say hash location one is nothing but thousand, I am writing into what? R1. So instead of that, I can also write like this. Instead of this, I can also write move hash thousand into R1. So we can use any one of the method. If I know the address, I can directly write. Otherwise, assembler will substitute the address for location one and write to R1. Now I'll write an instruction add r1 inside the bracket and then r0 it. so this is an important instruction what it will happen here at the content i will use a bracket till now i have not used a bracket around the register now i am using a bracket either parenthesis or square bracket anything you can use it depends on the assembler so what will happen here contents of r1 will not give the data contents of r1 will specify what location number now R1 is how much? 1000. R1 points to what? Location 1. Now it will go to the location 1, pointed by the R1, take some number 50, and then that will be added to what? R0, and the answer is stored back into the R0. So whenever you use a bracket, always remember that R1 contains an address. Then R1 acts like what? Pointer. And normally, when I say R1 is nothing but contains a value, it's a value like an integer. So when I say integer i, normal r contains a value. 
when I want to declare a pointer, let's say star PTR. So that means that I'm using a register to hold an address. So any register inside the processor can hold a value also. Can you also hold a, hold a address also? It depends on the programmer to take a decision. So in this case, when I use instruction like this, when I use a bracket around instruction, it is 100% guarantee that R1 is used as a what? Pointer because you're using to point to a, a memory location where you want to use the data. So this is called as indirect addressing mode. So let's go back to the... Here. Now read this instruction. Add R2, R0. What is the meaning of it? Add the contents of memory location whose address is indicated in R2 with an R0 and keep the, keep the answer in the R0. Now, based on this, now we will write one program. So, and understand these addressing modes, whatever we discussed in detail now. Now, this is the program to add set of n numbers. So, where is the numbers are stored? Numbers are stored in the memory location starting from the num1. Now, every word, every word or the size of every location, size of the uh, one location is 32 bits. We will assume that that is the memory is 32 bit memory or we can say that the memory is supports the 32 bit processor. So when I whatever the line I have written here, each line indicates what? So 132 bit since 32 bit means four bytes are there. So each byte requires one separate address. Four addresses are required for one word. So that's why the first word which contains the first instruction will go to 100. The second word address is what? 104. The third is 104. That is why four addresses will constitute one word. Now, so now we will start writing the program. Before writing the program, we will analyze what is the data present in the memory. So sum is the name of the memory location where I'll be storing the final, final answer. So 200 is an address of this memory location. N is the address of the memory location where I'm storing number of numbers. So now all the numbers are stored from the memory location called num1, num1, num2, up to num n. I stored all the numbers. I'll start the program. Origin 100. Origin it means assembler directive, assembler following the instruction. To or to be stored in the memory. If say one zero will be stored from a zeroth location. Origin 100 means storing from a and so it is not an processor, it's an instruction to an assembler. It's called as assembler directive. Now move n comma r1. So what does it mean that the contents of memory location called n, where you store the number of numbers present uh, in the memory, is moved into R1. So what type of addressing mode is it? It's a direct addressing mode because the memory label is used in the instruction. Now move hash num1 comma r2. Now here hash means what? It's a number. It's an immediate addressing mode. Num1 means what? Num1 means it's nothing but address of the memory locations. You can just find out. Now num1 is nothing but what? 208. So here assembler will substitute hash num1 by what? 208. So 208 will be moved to R2. After I write or execute this instruction, R2 act like a pointer. What is a pointer? It contains 208. That means that R2 is pointing to what memory location? It's pointing to the memory location called num1. So it's used as a pointer now. So what type of addressing mode it is? It's an immediate addressing mode. So instead of value, I'm storing an address, uh, known address like 208 into the R2. Now move zero r zero i am making r zero zero so that the final sum of all the numbers i'll be storing in a r zero it's like a sum variable it's a variable where i'll be holding the total sum so instead of move zero r zero i can use instruction called clear r zero also I can use it look at the difference here here hash zero is a value is a number where here hash number is what it's a address so that means that r2 is acting as a pointer r zero is not acting as a pointer it's just a value which is a normal variable. Now, I'll start the first instruction. Add R2, R0. That means that R2 indirect. It's an indirect addressing. So, use as a pointer. Whatever R2 is pointing now, that refers to first number that will be taken and added to the R0. Next. Once I finish one number addition, I should go to the next number. How do you go to the next number? You have to make the pointer point to the next location. 
we know that every one word requires four addresses. That means that I have to increment the pointer by four. So that is why. So add four to the R2. So now pointer is increment to the next word. Now I have to say that one addition is completed. How many? Still more more number of additions have to perform it. That's why we have kept a counter called R1. So R1 is like a counter. It's like a part i is equal to zero, i less than ten. That logic we are implementing here. So R1 contains ten. I will decrement that by one. It's nothing but like a starting for i is equal to so ten, and i I am decrementing every time I finish the loop. So I'll decrement R1. So now I'll check whether R1 has reached the zero. It's starting from ten, nine, eight like that. When it reaches zero, it set the zero flag. So the branch instructions, whenever I use like this branch, branch greater than zero means the instruction looks for a flag which is set by the previous instruction. So branch greater than zero looks for that zero flag. If the zero flag is not set, it branch to loop. So here something is missing. You can add here. The loop comes to the before the add instruction. So loop, please indicate before the add instruction. So before the add loop will come. So you branch to the again add instruction. So you keep on do this one how many times? Ten times. After ten times is completed, then you come back to the the next to the branch instruction. So here what we do? The total answer which is there in the R zero register, I am taking that value. I am moving to the sum. So this is the overall the final the program to add the set of numbers. So whenever we write a program. We should give sufficient space for the data also. How do we declare the space for the data? This is how we use it. Origin 200. That means the data is stored from a 200. Program is stored from a 100. Reserve. Reserve means what? You are reserving. It is like a allocating, like a malloc function. You are allocating four bytes in the memory, and the name of the first uh, word is called as sum. That is the meaning of it. Next. I have to declare a variable by name called n. It's called integer n. So whenever I declare a variable, we use a word called data word. Data word is nothing but integer. It allocates four bytes or one word, and also it initializes the variable to 150. So integer n equals 150. That is the meaning of the statement. Now again, I require space to keep the answer. To keep the answer. So if the number of bytes are, let's say, uh, 150 numbers are there. 150 means four bytes per one number. It's a 600. That is why. So we are allocating so 600 spaces. End is what logical end of the program. So if you look at the whole program, origin, reserve, data word, and the end. These are the instructions to the assembler. They, they, these are not the instruction to the processor. Instruction to the processor means they convert into machine language. Instruction to the assembler means they will not convert into machine language. It's only instruct assembler. How you to convert into assembly language? They are called as assembler directives. So this completes this uh, this program. So let's move to the the other addressing modes. What is there? Based on this, now this what is called index addressing mode is there. Index addressing mode means the address which you are referring to the memory is prepared by addition of four and the R two. So if you look at that, 4 R2 is there. What does it mean that? So 4 constant, it can be any constant 4 plus the contents of R2 will join together, will become one address. In that address, I will be picking up the data. So where it will be used? In the memory, lot of tables are stored. If I want to access the data with reference to table beginning, so table 1, I can say that instead of move 4 R2, I can write what? Move table R2. R2 will be what? Indexing into the table, making the variable R2 is equal to 0. I can go through the different entries in the table, like a single dimensional arrays. We use that instruction. Now, another one, base with an index. This, this type of addressing mode are used to access two dimensional arrays. Here, how the memory is accessed? Contents of R0 will be added to contents of R1. Then the total address will be prepared. From that address, you pick the data and store it in the R2. It's used for two dimensional arrays. Same thing base with index and offset here. A constant is also referred. Constant is also used to indicate in from the memory from which location you have to start. Table 1, table 2 like that. So it is like a two dimensional arrays. So starting from a particular place. So here the memory address is 10 plus R0 
plus R1 together will form one address. From that location, we will pick up the data and store in the R2. Next, branch any loop. So what is the meaning of this instruction? This is called relative addressing. <clears throat> so it requires some concept. I'll just go back there and explain. So Okay, so now if you look at here, so we will have what is called as relative addressing mode. What is the meaning of that instruction? If I want to branch, branch, let's say greater than zero to a location called loop. Let's say loop is available at a particular place. Now, to inform this instruction, I have to machine code this instruction. Now, what does the instruction contains? Opcode. Opcode is what? The meaning of this branch instruction I will be storing here. And the loop is nothing but address of a memory location. That address I suppose to write here. Address of loop. Now, if you take the program uh, processor which supports 32 bit, 32 bit, the starting address will be 0. The last address will be what? 2 to the power of 32 minus 1. So, any address, if I want to refer any of this memory location in this range, it requires what? Address requires 32 bits will be required. That is, address will require 32 bits. Because why? The data address bus is 32 bits and your address can fall anything in the range of 0 to 2 to the power of 32 minus 1. 32 bits are required. That means that I cannot represent the complete address in one instruction word because why the instruction is already requires some bytes some bits to represent an opcode the balance bits is always less than 32 bits so what we do in such cases we will add one more word and store the address into this one so totally instruction requires what two words will be required so to, to avoid the increase in the size of uh, the instructions because now always the trend is what? Is it possible to keep the complete instruction in one word is a trend. If the two instruction, if the instruction requires two words, that means that what? You require more time to read the processor. To avoid this one, what they do is already we have what is called as program counter is used. Program counter. What is the meaning of a program counter? It's always points to the next instruction to be executed. So program counter always refers to what? Instruction. Instead of specifying the full address of the loop, I can just indicate with reference to program counter, it is 50 bytes or so uh, it is in the negative. It's a minus 50 bytes. If I want to branch to another place, so which is not the behind, which is ahead of the loop. So some other place, let's say I want to branch to loop two. That means that what? It is from this place to this place, I do indicates, let's say 100 bytes. That means that if I specify the address with reference to the program counter, that is with reference to this current instruction, how far the, the next label is there or how much behind the label is there, then we don't require 32 bits. We can require only a small number that can be fitted in the less number of bits. So this concept is used to build what is called as relative addressing mode. So <clears throat> if you look at the relative addressing mode, it says that program jumps or branches to the location loop or any other label whose address is computed by adding the contents of program counter with an offset value that is distance of loop related to PC. So why we people use this one? Because the size of the instruction reduces. So relative addressing mode is used whenever we branch from one place to the another place and it's always what program counter value is used and from that you do what minus 50 or plus 50 something like you do like that then you branch to the particular place next one auto increment so we have seen that when we have written a program to add the set of number after adding every number i was adding to the pointer 4 so that pointer will go to the next word so to reduce and one more instruction 
the most of the process introduced what's called auto increment. What is the meaning of that? So here R2 contents will be used to fetch the memory data. After that, automatically the same instruction will increment the R2 by 4. So this type of instruction is called as auto increment. Same way, I can decrement the register also, I can do it, or increment also, you can do it. So there are two possibilities are there. The plus and minus, you can indicate the right side of the register. The plus or minus, I can indicate the left side of the register. If the plus is there on the right side, first use the address, fetch the data, then increment the pointer. If the plus or minus used uh, left side of the register, that means that first increment or decrement the pointer or the register, then use that register address to fetch the data. So this is how uh, different addressing modes are provided by almost all the process. So these are used to build the ALP programs. So summarizing, so there are 10 addressing modes are there. Immediate, more hash 20 R0. Register, move R1, R0. Absolute, nothing but memory, name or number is indicated here. Indirect, the register contains a pointer. In the register contains the address. One bracket is used here. Index, index means the one number is added to the register to prepare the address. Base with index, two pointers are used to prepare one address. Base with index and offset, a num constant plus two register contents are used to prepare an address. So whatever the address prepared at the runtime, we call it the effective address. Effective address is nothing but actual address which is used to fetch the data. So relative means it's a program counter is used as a reference to prepare the new address. Auto increment, it's the contents of the register will be incremented or decremented. So automatically as a part of the instruction, these are called as different addressing the modes what is being supported. So before we conclude the session, We'll do last program and then we conclude today session. Now this is the program which has been used to perform the computation of the scores secured by the student in the different tests. Now, so every student has got one record which is stored in the memory. The record consists of student ID, which is nothing but a number and student has formed or secured marks in the three tests. So one record, so that is one word for score, score test one, one word for test two, one word for the test three. Every student record has got a four words will be there. How many records are there? So many records are stored in the memory. Now I have to write a program to compute what is the total test scores. Test scores in the test one, test two and test three by all the students. This is what is supposed to do it. Now this is the memory allocated. I have allocated one memory to store the number of total number of numbers are there. That is why it's called as n data word 10. It's an integer n equals 10. That is the meaning of it. Then I have to reserve the four bytes to store the total sum of all the test one scores. Sum one reserve four. Sum two reserve four. Sum three reserve four. List is a place where all the data records, the records of all the students is there. It's a result 160. So assume that there are about, uh, uh, whatever the number, let's say uh, four bytes are required for one word. So, and then totally four words are there. 16 bytes are required for one record. So if for 10 students means it's a 160 bytes for 10 students. That is what we have reserved here, the 160. Always remember that whenever you want to declare a variable and you want to initialize a variable, we use a data word. Data word, data double word, data byte, like these words, these type of keywords are available. Whenever you want to just reserve the space without initialization, we use reserve. Now, the program goes like this. First, load the pointer into the R0, R0 accept pointer. Hash list means address of the first record. Now, prepare three register to hold the sums of the all the three tests. So R1, R2, R3. Now, now move the number of numbers, how many numbers into the R4. Now add four R0. See, we have used indexed addressing mode here. So in this case, what will happen? The contents of R0 will point to the, the first, layer, first record. In that record, 
the first word four bytes contains the student id so where is the test one score of the record is stored it is plus four bytes that is why so for every record when i add four to the r0 contents it will access what test one so move to r1 similar means what test two score 12 means what test three score of a particular record i got into r1 if this was not there this addressing mode was not there then you can write a program but it takes more number of instruction that is why typical addressing modes are provided to reduce the size of your assembly language program when the size reduces total time of execution reduces so addressing modes are so crucial when you implement different complex logics now i will once i finish the first record i will go to the next record every record consists of 16 bytes 4 into 4 that's why i'm adding say 16 to that so that my pointer moves to the next record of the student now decrement r4 r4 contains number of numbers so now branch greater than zero loop loop has to be written to the first add please write the loop behind the prefix the first add instruction now we'll repeat once you finish the program r1 contains the all the test one scores of all the students r2 contains the test two are they going to sum so this is how the programs are built in assembly language for doing this one so i will stop the recording any doubts you can ask it mohan can you stop the recording yes sir